you remember how excited I was when Ralph Rannick was made Manchester United's interim manager. And the reason I was so excited wasn't necessarily just to do with his style of football, him being, uh, you know, the mentor to Tuchel and Klopp and all of a sudden United were going to play gag and press and football and win everything. That wasn't why I was excited. I was excited because he was going to be part of the process of Manchester United modernising as a football club. And we're hearing so many reports now that Rudnick's not really involved in the process. He's being kept on the sidelines. He's not really being consulted. And in my opinion, if nothing really changes at Manchester United, I think he should be leaving United. And I think the club will deserve everything that comes its way if we turn our back on a man who I think really can be a sort of bastion for change and actually bring this club into the 21st century. That's what I want to do in explaining this video. And yeah, because for, for me, look, if you go back to what happened before he came in, Ragnick rejected Manchester United's first offer because it didn't include anything to do with being a consultant. He wasn't interested in being an interim manager. If the intention was always to bring Ralph Ragnick in just for the six months role and then basically downplay that, have, have we just thrown that as a sort of carrot to, to, to lure him in and we never intended on doing that? Because if that was the case... He was a bad appointment as an interim manager because he was never going to bring success really to this team. If we take a look at, you know, everybody was excited at the fact that we compare this is um, Manchester United when he came in uh, compared to his best team at Leipzig. Look at that. That's what we hoped that we could change into. Uh, Ralph Rannick's not been the most incredible manager at Manchester United, is he? You know, if you're looking at his win percentage, his win record, it's not incredible. But that's not why he was brought into the club, ladies and gentlemen. The measure of success for Ralph Rannick this season was never, ever, in my opinion, specifically down to what Manchester United did in the league, what Man whether or not Manchester United won the Champions League. For me, the foundations of the success would be what Ragnick left behind in terms of who was coming in and the change that he started to indicate. Insert indicate that the change that he started. Now, if you look at what happened and what has happened with Ragnick, it's just been a bit of a mess. We go back to March and we're, we're hearing that Manchester United had not internally outlined the role that Ragnick was going to have. It's not envisaged to be very hands on. We fast forward to now, and we're seeing the reports coming out suggesting that Ragnick is going to be consulted six days a month. Basically a pure freelance role. I don't think anybody massively expected it to be completely and utterly hands-on. But Ragnick, for me, as I said, the reason I was excited about him was not really to do with the football. It's about that's not where the strengths of his CV are. That's not where his strengths lie. Putting him into a, a, a managerial role, where he hadn't, considering he hadn't had a managerial role for over two years, was not where his strengths lay. They lay in bringing the foundation for somebody to come next. Hopefully that's going to be Eric Ten Hag. Whether or not it's Eric Ten Hag or Pochettino, in my opinion, will be slightly goddamn irrelevant if Radnick doesn't stay around. And if you're taking a look at how involved that he's been in the actual process itself, we've watched it. We've seen Radnick effectively saying, look, I, can't, I kind of don't really know. How does he not know? We're seeing separate reports from Andy Mitten and plenty of other reliable sources that... Randnick is basically being told, you focus on the season, all right? You focus on the football. You, you do that and we'll do this. That's not what should be happening. John Murto doesn't have any experience in this section of finding a new manager, of building a club. He's learning on the job. Darren Fletcher, he doesn't have any experience of that. He's learning on the job. You know, we've had this conversation before. If anybody is going to be listened to, it should be Ralph Ragnick. A man who laid out a plan openly. Honestly, I did a video on this early this week. He's saying that there's 40. You've got to mimic what uh, Man City and Liverpool have done. The successes that they've had. And they're building around a coach and buying players towards it. About the fact that we need players signed for physicality uh, rather than technical reasons. Uh, and players who have got the right DNA. Not the United DNA, but physical genetics that can actually put in a fucking shift. Rather than just passing it to someone else and saying, look how good that through ball was. And... Everything that he said so openly, so honestly, it's been a massive breath of fresh air to me. I'm sure it's been a massive, massive breath, massive breath of fresh air. Jesus can't get that sentence out. But instead, Radnick seems to be getting ignored. And now all of a sudden, because of that, I would say, you'll see reports from Austria here, from this Austrian newspaper, suggesting that the Austrian FA want Ralph Radnick as their next manager. 
and that their sporting director, Peter Schertel, flew to Manchester yesterday to talk to Ragnick. Now, the Austrian FA have denied that, which probably means it was correct. Probably means it was true. And I wouldn't blame Ralph Ragnick for leaving. I'd actually encourage him to leave because he was brought in. As I said, look, we take a look at what Ralph Ragnick has done as a manager. Yeah, he's cool. He's won, he's won the DFP Pokal. Oh, he's won a couple of Austrian leagues. That's not why we were excited. We scrolled down here and we're saying, oh, look, he was manager of Hoff He was manager of Schalke, Hanover, Stuttgart. A long, long list. That wasn't why we were excited. It starts from here and what he did in building up Hoffenheim. And here is why he was brought in. Sporting director at Leipzig at Salzburg, went up to being a manager, then went to being a global sporting director of the whole Red Bull brand. And we've seen what Red Bull has become over the last five, six, seven years. He was the man at the helm of that. He was the man at the helm of modernizing a football club, of bringing a club forward with youthful signings, with exciting signings, an excellent transfer policy that built up RB Leipzig. And Ragnit was at the core of it. And of course, he's come to Manchester United. He's come inside that caretaker manager role. And, you know, a bit uh, presumptive here. They've gone down as the advisor starting from July. But no one really fucking knows what's going on. It just, it infuriates me. Absolutely infuriates me with the concept that we're going to have, that there's a potential here that Ralph Randick was brought in as an interim manager on a two-year consultancy basis after that six months have finished. And he might just fucking leave before he's even got the opportunity to be consulted on what he's actually good at. We did not bring Ralph Radnick in to wave a magic wand for this six months to win us the Champions League and to get us finishing third in the Premier League. They were unrealistic expectations given what his style of play was to how Manchester United were. Two polar opposites. He didn't fit what Manchester United needed at that point in time. He represented what Manchester United wanted to be, where Manchester United wanted to get towards because of the excellent work he did at Leipzig as a manager, but also the excellent work that he did off the pitch with RB Leipzig. And the reason I'm so angry about this is I was dead excited when Radnick came in because of that long-term plan. For me, it was the smartest thing that United had done as a football club in a long time. It, it gave me hope that the path forward wouldn't be the same path that we treaded to get there because that's been, that's been a big problem. Led by this man, led by those snakes, the Glazers, and their over-commercialization of Manchester United, taking eye off the football, all of a sudden the football's not working anymore, all of a sudden the brand isn't as valuable as it was before. Almost like goings on on the pitch affected the value of the pitch. Hmm, who could have fucking predicted that? But Ralph Radnick, for me, was what was was the ability to be excited about the future the ability to think okay the structure might change we might actually get football men in taking football decisions and bringing our club forward and taking power away from the glazers taking power away from the people who should not be making those decisions and instead now we're seeing that ralph randick has just not been consulted through this entire process if anybody should be consulted it should be ralph radnick not John Murto, not Darren Fletcher, not Rooney, not Sheringham, not Butt. And maybe Nicky Butt, he's been in the club for eight, nine years. Out of all of those ex-players, he's probably the one that has a... He's seen the inner workings of Manchester United. He would know a little bit more about that. But just this concept that Manchester United have now... Have brought in Ralph Randick on an interim role, having been out of management for a couple of years, halfway through a season with a team of stars... And I said, as I said, a team which is just not built in his style. You know the three, the three pillars in his philosophy. You know the, the, the intense, aggressive press in football that he likes to play. So it should come as absolutely no surprise that Manchester United simply have not performed under Ralph Radnick on a consistent basis because we simply haven't. You know, and it, if you go back to that first game against Crystal Palace, the first 30 minutes, we were excellent, but we weren't fit enough or good enough to continue that. Radnick, for me, represented this hope that Man United had learned from the last eight, nine years under Moyes, Van Gaal, Mourinho, Solskjaer, that we had seen all the mistakes that we had made and we had actually admitted, said, you know what, we actually need to change as a club. For us to really compete with the teams that we want to compete with, for us to actually compete to win the Premier League title, we need to bring in the right sort of people, maybe to take our club forward and to actually change a bit of the structure of the club. But instead, we're now hearing that the man who was brought in to 
really sort of lead that change is just being ignored. The man who was brought in to instigate that change, he's not being consulted. And that we're just stepping back into that model which has sucked the life out of Manchester United for so long. Cool, things might change. Things, things, I'm, I, I, hope, I hope to God they do. But seriously, if things don't change, and Ralph Rannick and, and these reports are correct, these reports here that are suggesting that maybe he'll only be consulted six days a month and he basically will just be on the fringes and it won't be anything really down to him. He'll just, I don't really know what that role even is. Why would he do that if he's going to get other jobs? He left a, a cushy job with Locomotive Moscow, being that sort of sports director, the overseer. He doesn't want to do, he doesn't want to be a manager at this point in his career. He likes, that's what he's good at. Why bring someone into the club who's good at something and don't let them do it? Egotistical, it's ignorant. And hey, it's Manchester United, so I would not be surprised if they're doing it. But I wanted to do that video on this today because, yeah, again, it's something I've, I felt very strongly about the, this idea that the players were underwhelmed at Ten Hag. And I feel very strongly here that Ralph Randnick, for me, was the man to start, start the change at United. And if we're going to ignore him and just push him to the sidelines... I would absolutely expect the same pains, the same problems to exist under Ten Hag and Pochettino in the club. How do we step forward from that? I don't know. Maybe you think I'm overreacting. You let me know in the comments below, as you always do. If you would consider you enjoy the video and you're still here, well, that's a good thing because you did enjoy the video. But hit that subscribe button down there. Hit that notification bell as well. You get a ding every time I go live with a video. But please let me know what you think about this idea of Ralph Randnick and the idea that maybe he's only going to be set to work six days a month. Why would he stay at United? He shouldn't. Not on those terms. And he should absolutely leave if United have backed out of that promise that they gave him right at the very start. And the reason that he signed that deal was because he told he was going to be part of the process properly going forward. If that's changed, Ralph should leave and I wouldn't blame him for it.